outside from what we can see. Attendance confirmed as well, by the way, 57,570 people who have come through the turnstiles over the course of the afternoon. They will have already seen Kerry book their place in the semi-final, the defending champions cruising past uh, Tyrone. Who will be the second team to go to the All-Ireland semi-finals in a couple of weeks' time? Well, right now, it's anybody's guess. Conor Lane gets the second half started. Armagh defending Hill 16 and defending a one-point advantage. Early mark for Rory Grugan, the man from Bally McNabb. And he's just gone and kicked it away to Conor Boyle. Very cheap turnover by Armagh. There's a strange, strange decision. You know, you're a free taker on your right hand side, you get a mark like that, you think you put the ball down and to actually go across the field, right across the face of the goal is a really strange decision, really good. Game. Well the Armagh attack managed just one point from play between them in the first half and again shot shy there when the chance presented itself. Their conversion rate in the first half, 50%, six scores from 12 shots. Monaghan worryingly their conversion rate 38% 5 from 13 so room for improvement in both forward lines in this second half Charlie O'Burns from the Silverbridge Harps Club brings Ethan Rafferty from Grange into the game looking to kick long in towards Mernon the target man the moving target in that Armagh full forward line. Really good defence by Conor McCarthy. As comfortable on the back foot as he is on the front foot. And that Armagh attack peters out. Yeah, it did peter out. But again, I thought it was the right decision. Great ball inside. And Mernon got out in front of his man. And just a small bit of maybe a handling error stopping from probably winning the mark there and a tap over point. So it definitely is something that I think Armagh are better suited to, kicking the ball rather than trying to hold on to the ball and break it down. On the other hand, probably the more KJ moving of the ball suits Monaghan better. But definitely from Armagh's point of view, a little bit more direct, a little bit more carry forward, and just a little bit more energy to their attack. Well, it's been like yeah, watching chess on grass, really, in the first... Uh, 37 minutes or so both of these teams very much still in the hunt for that semi-final place but who will go and win this quarter-final Lavelle to O'Hanlon look for a moment there like things might open up he's been escorted almost uh, or Monaghan are over towards this left-hand side by the Armagh defence Killian Lavelle again. Carl Gallagher has moved into full forward along with Gary Mohan. Monaghan shoot from long range over the uh, target men. And that's a sixth wide. Poor decision, really. Yeah, showed well, did really well to get in there. Darren Hughes turned around and found by, by Killian Lavelle there on that occasion and just probably lack of composure just to turn and shoot there. Um, but again, did well to get in. Jason Duffy calls the mark, feeds Rian O'Neill, pops it inside, run being made by Kieran O'Neill who's got forward, Connor O'Neill looking to get turned, looking to play the pass, but bottled up, swallowed up, and again it's that Monaghan defence working in packs, hunting in packs, closing down the ball carrier and it's that scramble defence does any team do it that bit better just when things they look a little bit caught out at the back again in the first half we've seen Ryan Wiley again we've seen it in that occasion there just when something looks on these Monaghan players come out and all of a sudden they have three, four men around that ball carrier but again great ball from Rainer Hill over the top and I just do think they need to trust that Armagh they need to push on it keep trusting that game that they're trying to play and that kicking game that they're trying to play at the start of the second half because it will open up chances Vinnie Corey is getting ready to spring Connor McManus. He'll be in shortly. Monaghan do kick towards Carl Gallagher. Ball doesn't stick. And Armagh will break at pace. Grugan gave it to Greg McCabe. Brought down by Stephen O'Hanlon. And this will allow the change to be made. And here comes Connor McManus. 
Well, he's being used now more and more as an impact sub. And it's Carl Gallagher who's being taken out. Well, he's a big game player. He's back on the big stage here at Crow Park. And no doubt he could be a potential match winner. Yeah, absolutely, no doubt about it. Again, he's had a phenomenal uh, career and he is going to want to, to get involved. Probably has been, earliest probably has been sprung to the bench now and again to, on Crow Park and a good turf here. It's something he's going to look forward to. Interesting to see how it affects the dynamic of the Monaghan defence. They were defending the 14 players. They're now going to be defending the three and keeping Connor and Jack up the field. But right now, as you can see, Ethan Rafferty is a, a long way from home, the Armagh goalkeeper, Stephen Campbell. A real flair player, shoots, it's a dangerous one, pushed away by Began, and Connor Boyle it was, in the right place at the right time. Inspirational play by the Monaghan centre-back, O'Hanlon being encouraged to push on and kick on, gets it out as far as Desi Ward. First chance here for Connor McManus to make his move. Fouled, and there was a second bite. He was brought down initially by uh, Conor O'Neill, I think, and then Greg McCabe came across to make the second tackle, and the hands were high. Yeah, definitely come in there. Brilliant first touch from, from Conor McManus to, to round the man, got away from his man, and again, just Greg McCabe came in there, and there was contact around that frontal face area. Well, Noel Mooney, the linesman here on the Hogan stand side, has had a word with Conor Lane no doubt who he's looking for it is uh, Greg McCabe and the centre back from the Shane O'Neill's club in Camelot is going to see a card here Greg McCabe there looking extremely concerned at the start of the conversation and uh, a little more relieved at the end, it's a yellow. Yeah, listen, he did, he did come in late, I don't know if there was an intention to actually strike to the to, to, to the face, there was an intention to come in that little bit late and probably the yellow was the fair, but a, an opportunity from Conor McManus now to get his, get his name on the score sheet. So four Armagh players on yellow cards as McManus shoots and McManus scores. Monaghan's man for all seasons, Conor McManus, back in business, and Monaghan back level. Yeah, listen, where the, where the game has, has been lacking that bit of quality in the first half in terms of kicking and execution. Probably two free kicks that we've seen today from the identical positions, one from Rayner O'Neill in the first half on the ground, and that kick from Conor McManus was just absolutely incredible right behind it. And again, what a way for him for introduction into the game, and huge luck for Monaghan. Scores have dried up for Armagh, 18 minutes now since Andrew Mernon, uh, or rather uh, just one point in 18 minutes. Their last score came back in the 29th from Andrew Mernon. That's a foul on uh, Jarley Oak Burns, it will give them a, a shooting chance. But for some reason, it just hasn't clicked for Armagh up front, they haven't been taking chances and they haven't created a whole pile either since half time yeah listen they, they tried to kick the ball twice Sandra Mernon probably fumbled one on, on, on one occasion there was a great opportunity of a mark and I think probably that occasion that we looked at in the first half when, or sorry in the start of the second half Rui Grugan got that opportunity of a free kick to pass that up and kick the ball across the field probably summarises what we're seeing today from both attacks well Armagh have been leaning heavily on Rian O'Neill to keep the scoreboard ticking over and he steps up again he looks so assured so confident and he looks like he's never been away despite missing that uh, Galway game through suspension and Rian O'Neill nudges Armagh back in front Glory Began there just uh, decided in the end to clip it short likely with the way this game is progressing again we keep using this word we've overused it today in terms of caginess it's going to potentially come down to that free taking ability off Ray O'Neill on one side Conor McManus Jack McCarran on the other side or potentially a big boot from Rory Began there was some pass from Began there to pick out Michal Bannigan 
has it in his locker as McManus sprays it over to the far side to Stephen O'Hanlon just to open things up a little. O'Hanlon though, his move telegraphed, the block from the cave, McInespy to Mohan, Gary Mohan, he's been red hot at Crow Park this evening and he's up to three points from play. The man from Trua Gales has brought his shooting boots and he shoots Monaghan back onto level terms. Yeah, brilliant, superb block there. And Stephen, uh, Stephen, um, Stephen O'Hannibal was really noticeable. Connor McManus are coming on that loop there. The ability for him to raise that head and instead of hand, four to five hand passes getting that ball to the far side of the pitch, it was one kick pass from him. Monaghan an overload of players. And again, that's where that, free, that's where that came from. Kieran McGinney makes a change. He's taking out uh, Ben Creeley, the midfielder, and bringing in Connor Turbot, the inside forward. Bannigan looking to create something. Back to Darren Hughes. Hands it over to Connor McCarthy quickly. And here's Carl O'Connell. Armagh have set up the barriers all around the D that forces Monaghan to think on their feet and McCarran decides the best option is safety first and Monaghan will go back to come forward Connor McCarthy again the decoy run from McInespy Monaghan have lined up two or three would-be shooters on this left wing as McManus gives it to Desi Ward looking to spin out of the tackle Greg McCabe is all over him and he's given away the free well that was Monaghan 20-23 there in high definition yeah careful in the ball and if you listen to Vermeer still going to keep sitting off and a lack of contact and only make contact when they get into this vicinity here there's also always an opportunity of, of a foul listen if they get contact outside the 45 or under 65 it's outside the scoring zone but again go back to that man Conor McManus he's got on the ball three times scored with his free kick had one ball across the field to create a score and again that incisive it might only have been a fist pass but again he's attracting our mad bodies to him got that ball to Desi Ward and Desi Ward created a free free situation and Monon put Monon one up Jack McCarran now playing his club football with Scottstown lands his second Monaghan lead again Carl O'Connell Armagh haven't been able to get out from their own kick out Ryan Wiley looking to keep them penned in McCarran gets away from Paddy Burns Jack McCarran off his right shoots wide into the hill a seventh miss from Monaghan and they miss the chance to turn the screw a big, big, big turn on, on, on Ethan Rafferty's kickouts as they're going after it again here Aidan Forker gave him an out and a chance here for Connor Turbot to stretch his legs just in off the bench Aidan Forker he's got Kieran Mackin bombing through the middle Forker backs himself and the bet pays off two brilliant points from Aidan Forker well the forward line may not be clicking but Forker is super kick but again the ball away Ethan Rafferty up away to Aidan Forker at the top of his own D it was that 60 metre kick pass to Conor Turbot down from his own 45 that got Monaghan chasing backwards and again created that score Aidan Forker starts the move and finishes it team's level for the eighth time well we really are none the wiser about how this is going to play out extra time and penalty